<laughs> so as we said, one of the key things uh, about this programme is that it's differentiated uh, for both primaries and secondaries. And at secondaries, uh, it's actually called the Empathies. And I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Liz Smith, uh, who is the school librarian at the school Harry Tudor, uh, also known as Henry Tudor School, uh, if I was uh, doing my translations. Uh, good afternoon, Liz. How are you doing? Afternoon. It's lovely to see you all. Um, now, it's... Um, do you want to tell us about the empathies and about how you approached sort of delivering it at, uh, at Harry Tudor? OK, yes, it was our first, first year of doing it. Obviously, we've got plans for this year, bigger and better. Um, we were thwarted a little bit with the um, the COVID um, restrictions and in and out of school at the time. But uh, we managed to do a really fantastic set of votes with the pupils. They nominated books that they were reading in their English lessons and in their skills lessons. Um, and uh, then did the voting took place in their lessons as well. So in their English lessons, they did all the voting. And that was a mixture of online voting through Google um, Forms and also in person voting uh, using a voting box. Um, the books we normally, I think, have cho got them to choose the books, but that was a little bit difficult with the, the restrictions we were under. Um, so they were texts that they were using in class. And they went down really, really well. Massive knock on effect in terms of the the borrowing, in, certainly from a library point of view, the borrowing of those particular authors and um, the demand for other books by the same author, the actual text themselves. It's, it's been fantastic. And it was that was a, a really a good way to to kind of adapt the programme because of the COVID restrictions. Yeah. But yeah. but this year you've got bigger plans in a, in a, a kind of normal sense. <laughs> Yes, yeah, exactly. So this year, I'm hoping that we're going to have nominations by the, the pupils for any books, not just books that they've been reading in class. They will have a greater range of books because we have this year increased our um, year eight English lessons in the library. They have a fortnightly lesson in the library in English, and that is specifically for empathy. So we've got some fantastic texts that we've chosen. Uh, and so they will have read by the end of the year three, one per term. And uh, things like No Fixed Address by Susan Nielsen, which they're just coming to the end of. So they're sort of waiting for the, the final moments. And, and it's it's increased their demand for, for Susan Nielsen's books as, as well. So they'll have that wealth of um, by June when we're going to be doing it in, um, in tandem with Empathy Day. And they'll have a range of books that they've read in English for year eight. But also year seven will have been reading in their mentor time as well as year eight reading in their mentor time. Again, empathy texts, which are going down a storm at the moment. So they can draw on those and also on their own reading. And we've got empathy book spotting going on in the library. Staff are recommending books to each other and to the pupils. So I'm hoping that there'll be a, a really nice range of nominations. We might even need to shortlist, which would be <laughs> fantastic. So uh, I think that would be great. Uh, yes. and, and what sort of impact is it having on the sort of way that pupils use the library, for example? They're asking for different authors and a few of them have actually said we did some empathy conversations and a few of them have said that they uh, wouldn't have chosen these books to read. It wouldn't have been perhaps on their radar, but because of the, of the focus that we've been doing, because of the extra displays that we've been doing, both actual, um, you know, in-person displays, if you like, the physical displays plus the the virtual displays that we do on the screens around the school and on the website and so on and on our library web app access it they're seeing and hearing about new new books that they wouldn't have chosen before so and they're asking for those books as well so it's it's really really good we were able last year one of the things I, I did as an extra thing to the voting last year was to include um our top empathy boosting authors of the year okay. using our library web app so the information that came from that um so we had a top three authors empathy boosting authors and a top three empathy boosting books as part of the 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 awards so i think we'll carry that on this year as well yeah and with a, you know a greater range you're obviously going to get more more engagement and and exactly. potentially like you say you know it might not be a top three you might have to have a top five you've got that Absolutely. that many yes um, yeah uh, what were the specific texts that pupils started to to really engage with? What were the ones that that, that they really thought were you know actually really empathy boosting last year when you when you ran it? The one that really and it continues to be is the Soup Movement by Ben Davis. That has really captured 
their imaginations and their empathy with the characters, you know, two characters um, who are in hospital with cancer, but who help each other through that that experience, but also help other people. And the mitzvahs that um, the characters end up doing, we've actually had some mitzvahs in school. It was a lovely, a pupil just came to me and thrust this note into my hand and it, and it was a really little, a lovely little thank you note. Um, and they've been doing that around school as well to thank staff for supporting them. So it was really, oh, it's quite a choking moment. I didn't know it was coming. But so they've been sort of putting into action, if you like, their uh, this empathy in action their responses to that text that's fantastic that's a, a concrete example of the triple win coming out from you know Absolutely. reading about empathy you know understanding other people and then going to do something about it in social action terms that's that's fantastic um and conversations we've had with them and um yeah that that was one that really did strike a chord i was going to say you mentioned that some of the empathy conversations you've you've had with pupils there's there's a there's a big focus obviously in curriculum for wales about about making sure that empathy is 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 understood by pupils and and that they're practicing their empathy skills. How, how have you seen that that sort of crossover into your curriculum time for using using the empathies as 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 a kind of guiding tool? All of the the faculties are building in empathy texts into their um, uh, context for learning. I'm trying to use the new book into <laughs> their context for learning. Um, and it's meant that although I do liaise with every faculty normally. I think it's got an added impetus because we are sharing books I'm recommending to them, they're recommending to me and to each other. Um, so we're building in, even if they're not able to read the whole text, they're introducing texts and some are reading the whole text as well in class. Um, but it also it, it broadens the range of uh, resources that they're using in class and we're able to use some of the, the empathy books off the, the empathy lab um, lists, for example, um, books that we're finding as well that feed in. So it's been quite a challenge. It's interesting finding text that that they can use, but I think it will really enrich the, the teaching and learning. Just just as this is this is not a question I prepped you for, uh, but um, did, uh, do you found you've you've changed the type of books that you're you're reading now that we're 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 uh, doing uh, working with Empathy Lab? Because I when I came on board with Empathy Lab, I, I suddenly it opened up a whole new branch of young adult literature that, that I hadn't really come across before. Um, I'm always reading young adult literature. Yeah. I don't read any adult stuff at all. <laughs> um, that's great. And I don't I don't regret it one bit. I think perhaps I'm thinking about it more when I'm reading mm. and I'm perhaps seeing things in a different light. I'm not very good at taking notes while I'm reading. And maybe maybe I ought to, but I'd rather do it afterwards. So, but I'm looking for things differently in the books and thinking about the responses and thinking about how I'm going to be talking about it with pupils in a different way, perhaps than before. Yeah. Um, and I think also I'm thinking about reading aloud and that is another massive impact. We are doing a lot more reading aloud in school. Um, it, it may be, I don't know, got pushed aside a little bit, whereas now it's become more of a priority. And I think we're also seeing that some pupils are really responding to that, perhaps pupils who wouldn't take a book away and read it themselves. But because we're reading aloud, they're connecting with the books much more. That's fantastic. And, and talking of connection, there's, there is something I need to, uh, to talk to you about, and that is your magnificent website um, and, and about, you know, about how you've managed to not just connect with the pupils, but also that, you know, opening up to the world and letting parents know. I mean, how, what, were, what, were the, what was the kind of content that you wanted to have on the website? We want to really include what what to echo a little bit of what obviously what Empathy Lab are doing. So it was launched on Empathy Day, which was also when we announced the winners of the um, the empathies. Um, so the winners were announced online, which was really great because they could go and see the, the shortlist were already there, and then we just stuck like winner stars on them, and they were announced in their English lessons as well. But we wanted to use the website as a way of of announcing. Uh, the winners on Empathy Day and also linking up with everything that was going on on Empathy Day videos and uh, and the things that were that were actually taking place and also taking place in our cluster primaries so it was nice to include some of the content and um, to make sure that that linked in and I think we could do a lot more and build build on it for next year but um, to show some of the things that were happening like um, the the empathy um, 
resolutions that the pupils yes. were making and um, the music um, Oh, there, there, there were yeah. all sorts of things from the family pack there were bits of empathy conversations on there there were there was a big wide range of activities on empathy day and and it, it brought just, everything together didn't it in a package and that that's not going to go it's, it's staying on the website and it will just change and develop and, and obviously we'll look at next year's empathy day then and, and what we can do around that but i think the content on it will be tweaked gradually as we you know get used to things and how we're doing it in schools well as ever liz it's been a pleasure to talk to you and thank you for sharing your experience with everybody who's come to the training today um and uh, and i'll speak to you very soon thank you yes hope it's useful for everybody and uh, yeah good luck with your empathy journeys